Hi viewers, so today we will be discussing more commands in the draw menu like we'll be discussing arcs, circle, donut, spline and ellipse. So we'll be discussing these one by one. Now uh, before going into these commands, let us get discuss how uh, one has to proceed with uh, uh, any drawing in the AutoCAD 2007. So the first thing that you would want to do is to open a new file. So let us do that. So let us do that. Let us go to file, click on new, double click on a kit. Then you have to set the units. So you will write U and enter. And here you can set the precision and the units to be in millimeter as well. The next thing you should also check is to right click on the odd track, click on settings and then check whether all the important points they are checked here or not. So if it is ok then click on ok. And save the file by pressing Ctrl and S. Control S simultaneously, and you would want to save this by the name of, for example, lecture five. Now we have drawn some objects like we have drawn a rectangle, a circle, similarly two lines which are intersecting each other at the right angle, and two other lines they are not touching each other. So let us go to the R command. And click on three points. Let's say the first point of the arc, which is start point, so it lies on this intersection. Similarly, the second point lies on this intersection, and the third point lies on this corner. So let us click on these points. Click here, click over here, and click over here. So now you can see that an arc which has these three points on its periphery that arc has been generated similarly if in the diagram uh, it is given to you that the arc of uh, specific starting point ending point and radius information is given and no other information is given so you have to choose that option like go to arc and select start and radius because these three information are given to you in the diagram so let us click on this option and let's say the start point is this end point the end point of the arc is this end point and bring your cursor over here to to let us know to visualize the arc direction if we want the arc direction to be in this position so then uh, if the arc is drawn then you can give it the radius of for example 10 or 20 whatever you uh, whatever is required of you if the arc is drawn then we have to give the value like uh, let's say uh, let it be 12 and then press enter so now you can see that an arc has been formed with the start and end point and a radius of 12 let us look at the dimension radius click on this arc and bring the cursor over here and let's zoom it so yes the radius is 12 let's remove this press delete right so if we want to change the direction we can do that by starting an end point selection how we do that so if we go to arc start and radius we click over here first end point second end point the radius let it be 12 into 
because the value is more than half uh, because this value is 22.29 so we have to give the radius value more than this so let it be 30 enter and you can see an arc has been drawn in the downward direction now if you want the arc to be in the upward direction we have to swap the initial and this the start and end points so because in AutoCAD the arc is drawn in the counterclockwise direction between the start and end point so here we can use the same option arc start and radius click now here choose this as your start point and that end your end point and now you can visualize that the arc can be drawn in the upward direction so here we will give again the same radius of 30 mm 30 enter so you can see that we can have uh, the arc in different direction by choosing the appropriate start and end points so now let's explore the option of the circle and in the circle we can see different options like if you want to draw a circle with the information of center and a radius we'll click on the first command we'll click on the first option so let us click and then it is asking us to specify the center point of this circle and there are other options also activated so there is 3p 2p tangent tangent radius option as well so let us draw a circle on midpoint of this line we have to click over here and let us give it the value of let's say 4 enter so now you can see that a circle has been formed at this specified center point with the radius of 4 mm now again if you want to draw a circle with the information of center and diameter so here we will click and let's say because now it is asking us for specifying the diameter and by default it is 8 let us give it the value of 4 now so this inner diameter circle has a radius of 2 and the outer diameter circle has a radius of 4 now let us explore the other options in the circle command like 2p which shows the the initial and start point of the diameter so uh, if you want to draw a, a circle between this point and this point we will click over here and then click over here and you can see that a circle with the two end points or just two points or two end points of the diameter line has been formed similarly about the three point circle so we can select any three points and we can draw a circle which touches these three points so click on the three points let's suppose i want to draw a circle which passes through this point this point and this point so now we can see that uh, that required circle has been formed now here you don't have the control over the radius although you can change it by selecting it and then you know by stretching it out so you can change the radius but initially uh, in the three point circle you will specify the three points and the circle will be automatically drawn those three points now there are other two important options here there is tangent tangent radius command so tangent tangent radius if we click on this option it is asking us to specify the first object so let's say if you want to draw a circle which is tangent to this circle let us click over here click on the second tangent so now that circle is tangent to this circle as well and now we have to specify the radius so let us give it the radius of let's say 10 enter and you can see that this circle has been formed 
which touches or which is tangent to these two circles. Similarly, if we delete it and delete other circles as well, now again let's explore the same, the same option tangent tangent radius and we want to draw a circle which is tangent to this arc which is tangent to this side and let's say the radius is 15 enter so now the circle is uh, the circle is drawn but we can see that it is not touching the arc or the side but if we can zoom it and extend this line in the negative x direction we will be seeing that this circle will be touching these two the uh, this arc and this line so if we extend this let's say like here and if we extend this line as well then we can see that the circle is touching this line and also touching this arc as well but in the extended form so we have to give a compatible value sometimes uh, we will see that it is not tangent it it is actually tangent but in the extended form so if you really want to see the circle drawn inside we have to give a smaller value like go to draw click on circle click on 10 10 radius click over here click over here and let's give it the value of 5 enter so here you can see that this this circle that is drawn right now it is tangent to this arc and this line as well similarly there is a last option in the circle command which is tangent 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 which means tangent to three entities so let us click on this circle click on this circle and click on this arc and we can see that a circle is drawn which is tangent to all the three clicked circle or arcs so we'll be using this option in the future videos right so the circle command should be clear to you now Now in donuts they are also used for referencing or for patterning so in the donut command the first thing that it is asking us is to specify inside diameter and by default it is 0 0.5 maybe 0 in some cases so if you want to change that we have to give it some value like 1 enter and specify the outside diameter let it be 2 enter and now you can see that the donut is on the cursor and we can place it wherever we want right if you want the inside to be solid we can again go to the donut command and for that we don't have to go to the draw menu we will just press enter and we have to specify the inside diameter to be zero now zero enter and let the outside diameter be the same 2 mm so press enter and if we click anywhere we would see that now there is no inside diameter the whole circular area or donut is solid press escape to get out of the command now the other option is spline option and in the spline options the first thing so we will be just drawing line but that will be a smooth curve so if you click at any point then click in the x direction click in the negative y direction click in the x direction again click in the y direction and now you want to close the object or click again over here click again over here and then close the object so you will write c enter because there is this option of close so C enter now we are not out of the command it is asking us to select tangent so let us click on the outside and now we are out of the command and a smooth curve has been 
drawn through the points where we clicked. Again, let us draw it again. Delete. So draw SP line, smooth poly line, and let us click over here, 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 click over here. And then we want to get out of the command. So press enter. And now we have to specify the tangent. So let us click outside and specify end tangent. Click again. So now you can see that a smooth curve has been drawn through the points where you clicked. Right? The last command in today's lecture is about ellipse. So let us click on the ellipse and then you can get three options. We will explore the first two. So the center method or the axis method. Let us draw an ellipse of 160 by 100. So you will click on the center and click on the empty space and now in the x-axis direction just write 80 because the total length is 160 and we have clicked on the center before so we will give half the value of the total axis which is 80 so 80 enter and in the y-axis direction the total height is 100 so we have to give the half length so that is 50 enter and you can see that an ellipse has been formed if the object cannot be zoomed click on the top view where you you were working earlier and then you will be able to zoom it zoom out or zoom in we want to draw the same ellipse but with the other method so draw ellipse axis end let us trace the axis ends so here we got the quadrant let us move downward click we have to specify the other end of uh, other end point of the same axis so we will just trace it or we can give the value of 160 in the x direction you know when in this direction we can just write 160 enter and now regarding the distance to the other axis we have to give again the half length because it is taking the distance from the center now so we will give 50 and then press enter and we can see that the same ellipse has been formed so this was all about the various commands such as arcs circle donut sp line and ellipse if you have any questions in these commands or if you face any problems you can let me know in the comment section and thank you for watching